All right, so this is where we're at. Uh, I've been doing some experimenting and playing around today, and uh, what I ended up doing was I ended up driving out all of the valve guides. Um, this is an exhaust valve guide. That is an intake valve guide. These are steel valve guides, so what I'm reading online is that you're supposed to heat these up, just warm them, warm the spot around there where you're going to drive it out. Some guys say put it in an oven, put it in an oven and uh, do like 300 degrees for 45 minutes. And I'm reading other things where it's like just hit it with a torch and warm up those areas and then let each one cool substantially before you move on, which is what I did. So I've done, that's why it took me so long. So I did the intakes first because one of the problems about the exhaust is that it gets a carbon buildup around it. You don't really want to drag that through the hole because they got to come out from this end. And what uh, bottoms them out is those little clips that are around them. So they go in from the top. So what I ended up doing on the intakes was the intakes cleaned up really well with it with um, a brush that you put inside there, a round brush with a drill to clean out the ports. And then they were pretty much spotless at that point. No carbon. I did the same thing on the exhaust side and it took out about 95% of all the carbon. And then I just kind of just went through with a needle dick file very carefully around the, uh, around the, um, what do you call it? <laughs> what are these called again? The valve guide. And like you're cleaning, like somebody's cleaning teeth, you know, and just picked out any of the other very small stuff. Not perfect. You're supposed to blast these, like media blast them to make sure. But like I said, this is a budget build, so I wanted to try it. If I screw it up, I'll send it out and have them uh, reamed out for 2,000 over, and I'll buy 2,000 over, um, uh, you know, uh, valve guides, and we'll put them in at that point. But uh, they look pretty good. Um, I don't really see any problem with them. I don't know if I can show you a hole. <laughs> that sounds interesting. But uh, it'd be very difficult to show you a hole, but especially with the light, the way it's doing it, but. That's a basic, basically, um, let me put it this way. Yeah, so you get an idea. Um, there, I, I don't care what anybody says. There's going to be some vertical, uh, sc not scoring, but vertical um, scratching. Uh, you know, I don't care what it is. You know, if they're perfectly clean or not. I mean, they are a press fit, so they're going to make some noise, so to speak, coming out. So how I drove them out was I would used my um, air chisel, and I took my one of my air chisel bits... Um, was a pointed tip one and I took that if I can find it and I made a driver tool for these here it is and so this is the driver tool so this is the stock end that goes inside the or unmolested end that goes inside the tool itself it's not long enough so I had to remove the spring and so I was using without the spring on the first hole was an intake and it dinged a little the aluminum because it kept going and banged against there didn't do any serious damage. I did have to file down an edge in there to make sure that the uh, intake um, will come all the way down through. Even though it's tapered at the end anyway, you see it's tapered at the very end. So it probably wouldn't be a problem. So I just cleaned that up, no big deal. No cracks, no runs, no hits, no errors. So after that, I was toying with the idea of making one and I kind of started doing that, but I know I needed like tool steel for it and I don't have it. So I just took a piece of hose and cut it off and put it on there. And that solved the problem. So when it goes through, it bottoms on that rubber and doesn't, you know, ding anything. So that worked pretty well. And all I did was, like I said, I heat it up and then uh, put uh, the tool in and then put the, uh, it, you know, the chisel, impact chisel on the tool and brrr, right out. The last two, I tried um, some three-in-one oil on them because, you, you know, you're not, put, you're not heating these things up till like to weld them. You're heating them up to um, essentially when you drizzle some oil on them, if the oil starts to smoke, you're right at the right temperature. So that's what I did as kind of a test. I put some 3 in 1 oil on the last couple of exhaust ones, and um, I, I think it definitely helped. I wish I had done that on all of them. But So I used a, I used a spring gauge, and I've been miking these up, and they, they seem to be correct uh, as far as the size goes. Um, that spring gauge is a little funky. It's out of that Lufkin set I picked up at a garage sale and it's it's a little bit difficult to work because it's so short. So I'm not necessarily going to rely on that. But um, it'll all depend on how the feel of the new ones going in, uh, what that feel is. And I don't have them yet so I can't mic them up or anything to see what you know what the comparison would be if I chose to use a spring gauge in there. I don't know, maybe I got another one that size. I didn't really look. 
But um, other than that, the head is pretty much just going to get some WD on the on the uh, valve seats um, to uh, keep them from rusting, and that's about it. And then we'll put it uh, put it away for a while. Probably put it in a plastic bag, like a garbage bag. And then um, move on to other things because this is going to be something we'll do down the road. Uh, but in this video, you know, you're going to see it instantaneously because I'm just going to kind of catalog these clips as I do the work. In, earlier in the video, I explained my situation with this. Uh, that situation has not changed. I don't see any alternative than to do it the way I've described already. So I'm not going to beat that dead horse. Uh, a lot of horse beating around here. But I did run a fine... Um, ball hone through it. I have two grades, a rougher, a coarser and a finer one. And uh, it came out really well. Really liked the way they came out. I mean, they cleaned everything up. Any, you know, little stains or what have you, they feel real good. So uh, I haven't cleaned them yet, but I just shot some WD-40 and so they wouldn't rust after I wiped them out. So we're gonna run it. It's unfortunate that that uh, piston to bore clearance is so extreme, especially in number three here, but I just can't justify that much money on a motor that may have problems. Uh, it really might. You never know. I mean, I'd feel real horrible if I dropped an extra eight, nine hundred dollars on top end, and I get it running, and then I have to pull the motor out and flip it over and change out some bearings or you know transmission gears or something. Uh, I'd feel real crappy, and especially when this thing's going to run fine. With the pistons put them right back in and with the rings i guarantee it i guarantee it's going to run just fine so this thing ain't going down the racetrack people are probably not even going to drive it on the road uh, because of the lights and stuff so if they keep it in this uh, particular setup as a police bike uh, whoever owns it um, they're just going to ride it around maybe to and from a show or take it to on a trailer or something like that to a show and do that. I mean, otherwise you're going to be going down the road getting stopped and, and probably arrested for impersonating a police officer because of the red lights and stuff and all the markings on it. So this is really a, a niche bike, you know, something to show people at a, at a car show or a bike show or something. And really how much running is it going to get? So uh, I just can't justify it. I really wish I could, but I just cannot justify it. So I have no idea what I'm doing. But when does that ever stop me? So what I'm doing here, folks, is I'm installing valve guides. New valve guides, because as you saw, I got the old ones out. Sketchily, but I got the old ones out. Is that a word, sketchily? So what I have here is the Kibble White standard, this is an intake, uh, you know, valve guides. These bronze composite aluminum bronze or magnesium bronze or whatever they're called. And uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out, I, was, I actually was trying to figure out the best way to put these in um, because I would really like to use the press, which is over there, but uh, unfortunately it's just not going to work. Uh, I'd have to come up with some sort of a jig um, to put this at an angle, uh, almost at this, about this much of an angle I would need to come down a straight shot with the, with the, with the press, all right? So, but I didn't want to just bang these in because I've been reading horror stories from people banging these in and it distorts these things or it gets bound up and it really screws it up. So I, I came up with an idea to pull these in at least most of the way and then finish them up with a standard um, 7 mil uh, valve guide driver, you know, with a hammer, but not the whole way. So I'll show you what I came up with. I made this yesterday. I just tried um, this intake and one exhaust. I'll get to the exhaust here in a second. They're not going to work. And this is what it is. Let me take it apart here for you first. And when I reassemble it, you'll understand what I'm doing, what I'm, what I'm, you know, what I was going for. Okay, so it starts off with this shaft. I made this out of a piece of threaded rod, you know, all thread, uh, 7 16 diameter. And I put a small shoulder on the end of it, and I went over to the mill in a collet chuck in a because this is seven mil exactly, uh, in a nine thirty seconds collet chuck, and I milled a hex on it because we have to hold this on the bottom. You'll see why here in a second. I also milled a couple of um, seats, if you will, um, that go on the bottom side and and, and articulate with the valve faces. Uh, this would be the uh, intake, which is larger, and the exhaust, which is smaller. All right. We're going to use the intake one here in a minute. And so what this does is, when you put this through here, like this, if 
facing up. All right. This I I machine this at a 45 degree angle using the compound rest, and of course the valve face is 45 degrees. So I'll turn this over to show you if I can what we're talking about here. Zoom you up a little bit. So we're going to do this, uh, this be number two intake valve. So what we're going to do is we're going to carefully shove it through the hole, the big hole where the, where the uh, valve guide sits. You can see that this sits right there up against the uh, valve face. All right. Now we're going to get, I have a couple of blocks of wood here to help me out. It's always good to have wood. And then just lean it up like this. So right now what we're going to do is just uh, let it, drop for now. Now the next step here is we're going to put a valve guide on. So we're going to use a little assembly lube on these which is what I read is supposed to be used on the bronzes. You don't use any heat when you do the bronze ones according to what I've read. And we're going to slip that over and drop it down. Now what that does is at this point, what this does rather, is because um, that's a tight tolerance on that, you know, that wafer, that disc if you will, on the 7 mil shaft here and that's a tight tolerance as far as the valve guide goes over top of this. Um, it will essentially help keep it concentric with the center. All right, so what I want to do is I want to draw this in straight, at least most of the way, and then, like I said, we'll finish it up with this. I've already done one. These intake ones are sized properly as far as the holes go, uh, and so th this, is, this is pretty hard to do. I'm really kind of surprised the threads on this thing held up. I threaded this to um, 1 quarter 28 and then actually made a nut out of a scrap one that was in there with a tap because I didn't have a quarter 28 tap. There's a driver part that goes over it like this. So it starts about right up here. The next piece of the puzzle is this. This is a guide for the top part, for the back or the upper part of the valve guide. It's a, it's a, it's a guide in itself. So you slip this down. This is sized exactly to the bore where the bucket sits, right there. And so when this captures the top uh, edge of the valve guide, it keeps it concentric with the top. So my theory is that the, the, the rod itself, the draw rod itself, will keep it concentric down below. And of course, these are a little tapered anyway, these um, intake ones. And then this keeps it concentric on the top, nice and straight. And then you can pull it in with that nut. And it takes some force. The hex, of course, on the bottom is to keep this whole thing from turning, which I use with a quarter inch drive um, socket with a seven mil. I cut it to seven mil, all right? So a seven mil socket on it, which is basically 930 seconds, all right? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna open a packet up here. And like I said, I, I have no idea really what I'm doing here. I'm experimenting as I go, but I'm gonna do it right. I'm not gonna do it half-assed. So if I get these in, they'll be tight and they will be straight. I guarantee you, all right? So there's our intake guide. Now when we finish all this, these are gonna have to be reamed and honed with a little ball hone to kind of tailor them in, you know, to custom in, customize, custom, you know, get the, uh, the, the proper clearance between the uh, valve stem and the valve guide. So this slips over really it's a really close fit, all right, so it's not going to move around. All right, and then we're going to take this. We're going to take this. And the reason why there's two M6 holes on here is to thread a couple of long bolts in, longer bolts in, because in case it got jammed up, number one, I need a way to get it out. Number two, this is a way to install it. So we push that guide back down there, and then this goes on over top. I wish I could get you in here to see this a little bit better because this is the cool part when this goes on. really like the way this thing works, actually. And when you slip it in, you see how it goes down, and it goes right on top of the top of the valve guide. So now it's concentric. Everything's concentric. Everything's straight. Nothing cattywampus or cockeyed. You said cock. So there we go. Now I can take these guys out. Now we put the driver on, the driver sleeve, I guess you want to call it. And there is supposed to be a washer here between the driver sleeve and the, well, I want to put that on in a little bit. See, I, found, I learned from doing this that when it gets really far down, this thing gets super tight, this particular tool. So we're going to start it first, and then we'll take this part out, this uh, 
this donut looking thing with the two holes in it uh, because then this thing wants to start spinning I don't want it to mar up the top of the guide so for now we're just gonna put this in with a washer and with a nut like I said I'm kinda learning as I go when it comes to this tool and I already got this thing oiled up pretty good alright now we can go underneath here and put our socket on the bottom of it kinda kick it off to the side so it sits nice where it's supposed to sit, everything's lined up, so now we can just start tightening. These intake ones, as I said before, are sized properly. You know, I'm using a uh, spring gauge. It's too short to really get down in there and get a good feel on it to get it to to um, uh, to you know to stay where it needs to be. In other words, when you try to tighten this up, it kicks over the side and then it skews the measurement. So it takes some fiddling to get it down in there and get this thing right. So my first measurements were off. That was the whole problem. That's why I measured, I ordered the standards. Now it turned out the standards are okay for the intake, which I didn't know at that time because my measurements were all skewed because it was so hard. But once I figured out how to get this in properly and kind of used it as a go, no go, once it got set right, and you can set these of course to a micrometer if you want, um, I realized that I got about a one and, one and a half thou to one and three quarter thou crush on these intake ones, but the exhaust was essentially at the size, the hole that is, of the guide itself. So that one of them went in sort of okay. I have one installed in number four over here, the exhaust side, and it um, it went in sort of okay. But the bottom line is. Um, you know, I was a little bit c concerned about that feel at that time. It, I would consider it marginal, the feel. It went in too easy, in other words. So, this is going in good and tight. I mean, good and tight. Now that it's getting tight, I'm going to take this off. Put that washer on that goes between the sleeve and the top of the guide. And I can take the, um, the alignment uh, bushing, if you will, out anyway. I don't need it now. We're, we're well aligned in there. So we'll put that on now. So this is, I think this is the feel that you would be looking for with a, certainly an overly complicated tool like this. But again, I get the feel. I can feel it pulling in. Like I said, if I had the press available where I could do this, I'd be done already. I'd be pressing them in. But in lieu of that, we can use the power of a, of a thread to put force on, and this would be in PSI, pounds per square inch of force, down onto something that we're trying to either move or hold or what have you. Now she's getting down to the bottom, if not already there. So now we're going to switch this around and take it off. Looks like we got a little damage to the thread on this one now. <laughs> this may be the only other time this tool is going to work. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Because this got hot. Yeah, that's the problem. It got hot. Because of all I, I did put some oil on it. But the other one, it just came right up. So we'll, <laughs> we'll have to see. She looks down, but this is how I tell for sure. I take the 7 mil driver and give it some hits. So that's solid. So so the reason why I'm doing that, I failed to show you before, there is there's an edge built into this. It's a it's I wouldn't call it a it's kind of a mini shoulder right there. That's your stopping point so it can't go any deeper. This is an exhaust, but you get the idea. Uh, on the ones that came out there was um, clips like sir clips that were installed inside grooves, but again, these are these are machined into the um, into the valve guides themselves. So now I know these two are good. And so the I, I've measured up all the intakes. Now that I figured out how to get this right, you know, to do it right, and use it as a no-go gauge, because like I said, it's very difficult to take this thing. Because typically, what you do with a spring gauge is spring it open. Say you're putting it in a bore like this, spring it open and tighten it and then lift it up until it compresses because it'll force that even when it's uh, tight you just don't tighten it super tight 
and then you take it out once you get that feel and then measure it. It's just so hard to do in here because the part you got to hold um, to tighten the back section is down in the in the counter bore. So now that I made it into a uh, into a go no go, um, I can mic these up, and the intake ones are micing up where they're supposed to be. Where they supposed to be? Where they supposed to be? They're supposed to be. So they're at 473, which is where all the holes should be. Actually, that's a good feel. So we're 473. Okay, and if we mic up a Let's go ahead and take another intake out. They're over here. If we mic up a new intake uh, valve guide, we're at 475 and maybe two or three tenths. So we got a basically basically a a two thou crush, which is what we're looking for. So that's why these are fitting really well. Now on the exhaust ones. I realize this is it's still an intake, but you get my idea. The outside diameter is the same as these intakes, but for some reason the uh, holes are a little bit larger. Um, I, I really didn't notice any aluminum transfer or anything. We'll go ahead and see if we can reset this to show you uh, when I took them out. So right now I got a good feel on number three exhaust. We'll see what that is. Remember the intake size. Uh, if you look at the exhaust size, I'll show you this here in a second. We're at 476, almost 476, 475 and maybe eight tenths. So that's the problem. When I ended up putting number four exhaust in, you can see that right there. Number four exhaust is in. And like I said earlier, the, the feel was marginal with this tool pulling it in, which <laughs> I don't know how long we're going to get out of this, but the, the, the proof of concept is good at least. And I think what I'll do is I'll just have to stop a little sooner and use the driver for the rest of it. But when I put this one in, it, it felt like marginal. I don't really know what the feel is now until I get these. I got these two in and I'm like, okay, that's how probably how it's supposed to feel. But um, this one went a little too easy. Then I tried number three exhaust and it basically went boop, right in. So I said, crap. So I'm getting ready to return all the unopened ones, including the intakes. Uh, when um, I realized that the um, uh, the, ex the intakes are probably good size for this. So that's why we're doing it this way. So I've ordered four of the 2000s over um, intake, exhaust rather, which will give us our basically, you know, one, a thou and eight tenths or so crush on them. These are about two thou and that should work perfect. Got smart and switched out to a ratchet because that wrench is uh, getting a little uncomfortable on the old on the old uh, bear paw there, you know? But I kind of wanted to get an idea of the feel of it with a wrench, you know? Good proof of concept, but the uh, execution is a little bit questionable. It's kind of like a Rube Goldberg um, installation tool. Got to have 15 different things in line to get the thing to work right. Who knows? It might last. Okay. Looks like... <laughs> well, unfortunately, she gave up the ghost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Um, yeah, not much I can do about that. Yeah, it's stripped out, so... I, I kind of figured that was going to happen, but uh, I just wanted to try it out first and see. She got uh, most of the, well, not most, but good good amount of the way down. So we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way and drive it in the rest of the way. But um, the nice thing about this setup is if I choose to just drive the other ones in, um, I can still use this part of the tool to keep the top of it lined up. Because these things do have a little radius on the end of them. As you can see that the intake one has a pretty good taper. But even the exhaust one has a little radius. So it's going to want to try to start straight on the bottom. On the top, though, it would be easy to get a cattywampus, but with this in place, it won't. So we can actually put one in, and I'll try the last one this way, and put this in on top to keep it straight, and then just drive it in with the driver and a hammer. I think that's about the only thing we're going to be able to do right now, because like I said, I can't um, set it up in the press, although I'd really want to. But this worked pretty well. I mean, it's a good proof of concept, you know, that you can make a tool like this. It just uh, needed to be a different material. You know, if it was like tool steel or something and we could harden the threads at least. Like if I had some tool steel 
And uh, then I did the same operations and then even flame hardened this, you know, just hardened it and then quenched it and then, and then uh, tempered it um, with, a, with a better nut that is. It would probably work pretty well. So, yeah. Anyway, let me finish it up. Okay, folks, the suffering is almost over. The suffering being, of course, this video. But I wanted to finish it out with the, the head here, which is pretty much almost done. And that way, you know, I don't bump it over in the next video because this is all about the head and the cylinders and the cylinder rather and uh, in this video. So anyway, here's what we got. Obviously, I've got the valve guides installed, the new valve guides. And I reamed those to 7 mil and I ran a um, uh, 7 mil, um, I think it was a medium to fine grit, uh, one of those uh, ball, ball hones through that's designed for it uh, to clean them up and deburr them. Everything spotlessly clean. I measured the ID of all the valve guides, mic'd the OD of the um, valve stems, and my clearance is within spec. It's toward the outside of the spec, but it's definitely within spec. Roughly one, one and a half thou, approximately one to one and a half thou, is a little different between the exhaust and the intake, but the intake's a little tighter than the exhaust, but they're all technically within spec, okay? And so, because the exhaust stems are just slightly smaller diameter, so that because the, uh, uh, the the valve guide IDs with the reamer is exactly the same, or it should be. So that's all done, and I like the way that came out. So for the seats, what I ended up doing was I used that knee way or new way, whatever it's called, cutting kit, and did a three angle on it because you know these seats were way way wide the original ones um, I, I never I couldn't even find any other angles in there it's almost like they were never cut but it could be because the seats were just mostly obliterated and uh, so it was very wide and so what what the instructions say the instructions in the new way new way kit the valve cutting kit want you to cut the relief angles that would be the outer 30 which brings in the outside diameter of the seat the inner 60, which brings the seat into a certain width as far as the narrowness of it. And then, of course, the 45, which is the mating surface or the facing surface of the valve itself. But um, the Kawasaki manual, the factory manual, which I did find a copy of online, says to do the 45 first, then the outer 30 to bring in the overall OD of the seat, then the inner 60 to um, bring the seat width down. Now, I can't really verify this, but the, the uh, climber manual shows that as a 32 degree angle, not a 30 degree. But I couldn't even find a 32 degree angle cutting kit. There's a 31 degree cu a cutter in that kit, but it's for a small valve. And I said, I can't be it. So we did 30, 45, and 60 as you traditionally find on these. It's the way it is. So what I ended up doing after I did those, I lapped all the valves in. And when you lap the valves in, you can really take a good look at the contacting surface. That's why the uh, Daikin Blue is here of the seat and the valve itself to see if it's falling on the valve where I want it to. And most of them are pretty much dead on. I mean, some are directly in the middle of that valve seat. They actually want it up to the upper third. Most of them are like that, but that's going to be what it is because I can't take too much out of these. That, uh, and, that, and that reason why is because it, it screws up your install valve height, which I'll get here to it in a second, all right? So once I got that done, um, I ended up, like I said, I lapped them all in, and then I had to measure the in, install valve height. So let me flip this over, and I'll kind of go over um, what you're supposed to do with that. I meant to film one of these, uh, measuring it, but I forgot. So they're all in. I can't do it now. Be, because they're, they're good. I've tested them, which I'll go over that here in a second. So what the install valve height is, it's the top of the valve with the valve closed. you got to hold it closed. And then measuring down with a, with a caliper, even the manual says with a caliper, down from the top of the valve to the bottom of the bore in which the uh, spring seat sits. So you got the spring seat, the springs, and then the spring top and the keepers. All right. So that very bottom without any seat in there, you measure the um, distance between the top of the valve and, <clears throat> excuse me, that bottom of that bore. Now that's very difficult to measure when you got something like this teeter tottering back and forth. So I made a little tool for it, which I'll show you here real quick. This little valve cap tool. It has a bore in it with a flat um, surface on the top, which I did with an end mill and the and the chuck on the lathe. So I just chucked an end mill over the right size. 
And what happens is this is one of the old valves, of course, but you get the idea. It goes down and it bottoms on the top of the valve. All right. And then this distance between that flat inside there and this is exactly a hundred thou. I machined it so it's exactly well, it's within half a thou or so. So it's a hundred thou. So now all I have to do is and I milled this little slot as a relief so I can put this like this. And then once I release the lock on my stair at 120, you can see it goes down inside like this. And then you push it down. And it's really easy to keep it this way because you get a much, um, you know, much broader surface. And you can kind of eye in this way, you know, X and Y. And then so you go down until it stops. And then you measure it. And then uh, you, I do it a couple times to see if I got repeatability. And if I do, I go with that number. So this worked out really well. And just add, you know, you just subtract 100 thou from it. So as far as the install valve heights go, I rigged up a setup on my lathe to um, grind the, the stems a little bit, which was a little bit sketchy, but it worked. I mean, they're not perfect finish here, but they're flat and they're not, you know, gouged up or super rough. And th they'll work. They're not going to be a problem. And so I ended up taking between five and eight thou off each one. My target was eight thou on each one because I measured each one unmolested and they were a little bit over the maximum allowed for a normal tolerance. And uh, when you calculate that out into Imperial, it's uh, 1.496. I forgot what it is in, in millimeters. And that's the high end. And you can only take off no more than 11 thou in, in Imperial off any one particular valve stem because I think they're afraid it'll um, get down too close to the keepers and could release the valve and the valve drop in the cylinder. So I targeted it at 8 thou and uh, essentially I, after I did one or two of them with actually measuring with an indicator I saw how much I actually took off based uh, relationship to the chamfere that was on these things and I was able to eye the rest of them in and I got them really accurate. So I do one and I deburr it and then I put it in, I measure it and of course that was the one that's already been lapped for this particular spot. In this case it's um, number four intake. And then um, just set it aside because I know that one's done. So I did all those that way and so I know all the install valve heights are good. Like I said they're just below that a top tolerance because you really can't take any more off because these valve seats were in really cruddy shape. Even the intake ones I thought originally they weren't so bad but I had to cut those a lot more than I really wanted to to get them to all clean up and so uh, especially the exhaust the exhaust was real bad so that brings us to the final installation and testing so how I do that is like I did on the XS11 um, I didn't uh, do anything but grind those valves a little bit to clean them up and then lap each one of them in and I fill each combustion chamber up once the sparky plug is back in uh, with gasoline right up to the top and gasoline is an excellent uh, material to use for that because it's so thin it'll get through anything if there's any spaces it'll go through I know some guys use water and they just fill them up and they'll let them sit for overnight even or you know hours but I don't have hours or overnight to do this so I put the gas in it and then use a mirror and look in from each side and let it sit for five minutes or so that's long enough because gas will definitely find its way through like right immediately it'll start oozing through all four valves or all four you know pairs of valves rather pass no problem they are definitely sealing which i expected because i had really good contact that i could see again with the dicum um, on the seats at least and i could see it on the valve um, faces uh, when i lapped them in with some fine lapping compound all right so that that's pretty much where we're at right now so what we need to do next is uh, install the cams and set the clearances right here on the bench that's how I do it I don't wait to put it on the bike for this I'll do them right here on the bench so what I'll end up doing is I'll end up putting uh, the cam bearings back in I did not replace the bearings at this point I haven't had a chance to get her, get to um, putting the caps on with the bearings in place miking them with a spring gauge and then miking them up and then miking the journals and doing the calculations for the oil clearance. I will do that really quick. Um, I don't really expect them to be too far out, but it's possible. And if that is the case, then I'll probably have to order bearings. But 
I won't be able to do the clearance until I do that, but I need to do that first. But assuming I can keep using or reuse the ones that came out of it, and, and I'm sure the journals are good. I've never mic'd one up where the journals weren't. Usually they're scored or something, but these aren't either. Then we can go ahead and put the shims in it came, where they came out and start with that. Now, obviously, we're going to have to probably change all uh, eight shims because, uh, you know, it's probably going to be uh, way outside what the shims that I currently have in stock which includes the ones that came out of it and what I have in bins over there. All right, so I don't know about that. I'm going to have to calculate that out. Unfortunately, I cannot find a kit. Um, Z1 Enterprises has been out of the 29 millimeter diameter shim kits like forever. So, but they do have individuals. So what I'll end up doing is I'll use what I got. Um, if some are really tight and I can't even measure it, I'll just order a set or a, a range. Um, that I estimate is probably the right ones, uh, progressively smaller from a starting point, and I should be able to hit my mark at that point. So that's what I'm going to do off camera, and uh, we'll go ahead and get that back together, and I'll report the findings on that, and then we'll close this video out, and that covers the head and the cylinders completely. This thing will get set aside at that point until we can uh, get the pistons installed with the new rings, put them back in on the connecting rods, finish the cylinder block, Get that installed and then pop this guy on top the results are in and i've got the cams in as you can see they're in correctly in other words exhaust with those marks facing which would be the right side of the bike this is the exhaust side intake side and then all the caps on in a proper place and they're all torqued up i did mic up the bores the openings and the journals i've got uh, about uh, three thou where is that? Uh, I got it here somewhere. Oh, it's on the other side. Uh, I'll tell you, it's it's good. Just trust me on that. Okay, it's like three, four thousand. You can go two to seven. So we're definitely on the tighter, definitely on the tighter side of the clearance. Um, they're a little bit aware on the on the bearings, but you know, I even rotated the spring gauge around, and it's you know, let's say three to four. So we're good there. So what I did was I did the exhaust side first, then the intake side, and what I came up with, both sides are big. In other words, the clearances are too large, which is good. I was worried that they'd be too small because the smallest shim you can get is a 2.10 millimeter. We've got a couple here that are at 2.20. Actually, there's a 2.10 already in number three exhaust. Um, on, I disregard that. This is my first attempt, and I switched some shims around. So this is the final for the exhaust. This is the final for the intake. So I've got a 2.10 shim, which is the smallest shim they offer, but I'm big on that clearance. I'm an 8 thou. Clearance is supposed to be 2 to 6. So I can at least have a little bit of wiggle room in case it tightens up in the future. Sometimes they don't, though. So, um, you know, it's the way it is. Unfortunately, when you do valve uh, jobs and you cut away some of the seat, you got to grind, usually grind away a little bit of the stem, and then you can um, uh, maintain some sort of clearance. But it's fairly even, which I thought was pretty good, with the ones that were in it, in the order they were in it. Six, four, eight, and seven. Number four, this number two exhaust is doesn't need any adjustments at 4,000. It's the only one that came up. But then again, if you look, number one exhaust at 6,000, and then um, number four exhaust at 7, I might just leave number one because I'd rather have them a little on the big side uh, because these are going to close up a little bit with a fresh uh, valve job. So uh, I'll probably just leave that one, but I think I might want to adjust this one down. If I can find a shim that bumps me down, I don't think I can find one to bump me down a 1,000. It'll bump me down two. So I'll probably go down to five on this one, which is still on the higher side of our standard. Now the intake side, everything is big, huge. Um, one through four, eight, seven, eight, seven, respectively. So that's good. Um, I'd rather have bigger clearance again than smaller, because then I can, I, you know, I can only go so small. So there we go. And all you do, what I do with this is I put these things on, you know, the cams in, torque up the um, caps, nice and even, to draw the cam down. You want to make sure you put it up on some blocks so you're not driving the uh, valves into a work surface. In case I don't know how high the lift is on these, but I don't take any chances. And then I just use a uh, shop-made like pry bar thing to just move these around, you know, on the cam itself. Just just basically basically like that. They're pretty hard to turn normally because there's always one that's contacting a lifter. Uh, you know a shim so it's not like these are going to spin around freely they got the spring pressure of a lifter on there everything's assembled with assembly lube but these all have to come out again anyway after I do the final adjustment when the heads installed so we can get the cam chain on them and then time them up properly so again on the bench here is only for the purposes of setting the clearances but then I don't have to worry about it when it's over there
I always do it that way. I convert over to Imperial. It's just easier for my brain. I don't use the charts in the manual because, you know, you go up a row or a column rather and over a row. They just don't work for me. It seems to be not quite as accurate as I need a lot of times. You end up with a shim that's either a little bit too big or a little too small no matter what you do. So that's why I converted over to Imperial. So I just have to do a little bit of math, some conversion math, and figure out if I need a 2.20 or a 2.15 or a 2.25, you know, for a particular cylinder. Order those shims, and then um, we'll be able to dial it in. It's never failed me before. So that's what I'm going to do here in a little bit. I need to order those shims. Um, I'm going to order the proper tools so you can do these uh, shim changes on the shim over buckets in situ on these uh, KZ1000s. It's a little like clamping tool. I don't have one. I want one. So when I want something, I'm going to get it. So we're going to order that. I need a couple of O-rings that didn't come in the top end kit. Actually, four, four of them. Four of them. And then um, in a future video, which will be the next one, whatever number this is, I don't remember. I've been filming this over the last two weeks. Um, that, that'll be when we get the bike back in here finally. And then get the cylinder block installed with, the, with one new piston and all new rings. Um, and then on new gaskets, new seals, whole bit. And we'll put this uh, head on. And in that video, we're going to fire this thing up and see how it runs. So till then, you know what you need to do. You need to stick around. Subscribe, like, ring the bell, share the video. You get notified when I put other things up like this and other crap. And until then, as always, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on that next video.